Today, the S&P 500 rallied off of the 200 daily moving average, but was it all just a bull trap? First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. Today's SPY was up 0.78%, and we did get that strong bounce off of the 200 daily moving average, which was that critical risk level at support at 393. Now into the close, we did get some selling pressure just below that 50 EMA, and we did squeak out a close just above the 5 EMA. So the easiest way to watch the price action from here is watch how price behaves around the resistance between 399 and 400 and only get bullish if price can break back over that resistance. The reason I suggest waiting for price action confirmation is because there is a very good chance we could get rejected from this resistance and still make another attempt to retest the breakout of the resistance trend line down here right around 390. So treat SPY as a trading range between 393 and 400, knowing that we need to see a break of this range to know where we're going from here. We do have a very early warning sign in the SPY that this trend could be rolling over because we are below the support trend line. We do have the negatively sloping 20 daily moving average and price has still not broken back over resistance. So manage your risk around the resistance at 400 and the support at 393. And remember, if we do start losing critical support, we're likely going down to 380. And if we break out of the resistance, we're likely going to the gap fill at 408. Know both scenarios and let the price action do all of the talking on which one is playing out, which we're very likely going to know over the next few trading days. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were up 0.83% today, and the triple Qs have a very similar look as SPY, getting a positive bounce just above the 200 daily moving average and reaching resistance at 294. Just like SPY, it is much safer to wait for a break above the resistance to get confirmation we're going higher. So in the triple Qs, that is going to require the breakout above 294, and that should be the all clear that we're going to 300 and then the gap fill at 303. If we get rejected from this resistance, you can see we did not yet fill the gap below, which means we could be coming right back down towards 288 and then below that we could start trending lower to fill the gap at 273. So this is a very clear trading range in the triple Qs between 288 and 294, knowing the next leg in the market is going to depend on where price action breaks from resistance or from support. On the Dow Jones, we were up 1.05% and the Dow Jones is back over that resistance at 327 and we have not yet tested the 200 daily moving average, which is still down here just below 324. So if this is going to end up being a bull trap, expect the Dow Jones to get rejected and then come back down towards its 200 daily moving average, which is likely going to happen over the next few days. The bull breakout from here will require a break back over 333 and then above 333 we could run back up towards the 50 EMA and 20 daily moving average between 334 and 335. Above that we should have the all clear to run back into the 340s before we try to make another attempt to break out. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were up 0.24% today and the Russell got a bounce off of the positively sloping 50 EMA at 187 and it did close back over that support at 188. The bulls are consolidating above a rising 50 EMA and the next thing they need is the bull breakout above 191 to 192 and that should be the all clear that the small caps are going to the low 200s. Any rejection from here will require a break below the support at 187 and then we should come down towards 185 and then the gap fill around the rising 200 daily moving average at 181. On the ARK ETF, we were up 1.24% today, and the ARK ETF did bounce back up to the resistance at 39, which is exactly where you need to manage your risk from. From here, we could easily see a continuation of the downtrend of the lower highs and lower lows on a breakdown from the resistance at 39. The bulls need to break back over 39 and then get the break above resistance at 40.4 up to about 41. And then that should be the all clear that we're going back up towards 43 to 45, but it's going to require the break above that resistance. On the VIX, we were down 4.81% as the VIX continues to get crushed every time it tries to break out. And we did get the first day of the VIX closing back down below 20, which is exactly what we need to see for the bull trend. We need to see the VIX closing back below 20 yet again tomorrow because there's still the possibility the VIX could spike from this support zone. VIX below 20 is bullish and VIX above 20 means you need to remain cautious. On Bitcoin, we're currently down about 0.69% and Bitcoin is still sitting right on top of the support trend line and rising 20 daily moving average of support at 23,500. 
If we break this support, we're coming to 22,400 and then 21,300. And if we lose all of that support, we're coming back down to 20,000 at the rising 200 daily moving average. The bull breakout will be above 25,000, which should send us to the next target higher at 30,000. On Google stock, we're looking at the ticker with the L in the name, which is the class A shares. And we were up 1.81% today. And we are getting a bounce off of this very strong support zone at the gap fill at 88.5. The gap fill of support could be the bottom of this channel, which could send us on a very nice rally that could take us all the way back up to the gap fill at 110 over the coming months. So manage your risk around this support zone between 88 and 89. Some upside resistance to pay attention to will be the gap fill at 93.2 and the 50 EMA at 94.5. And then above that, we have resistance between 95 and 96. If we can clear all of that resistance, look for a nice run back up towards 101 to 102, and that is also going to be resistance at the negatively sloping 200 daily moving average. If we break down below support, we could still retest the lows around 86. On Amazon stock, we were down 0.4% today, so we went absolutely nowhere, but intraday, we did start to push on that gap and trying to fully fill that gap, which is down there at 90.19. The gap has not yet been filled and there's still a very good chance that gap is going to fill before we go any higher. So manage your risk as a bull right there at that support at 90 because if it does break down, we could come back down to retest the lows around 82. The next bull breakouts will be above 94 and 98 and then we could retest resistance at 102 and then reach our price target at 109. On Microsoft stock, we were up 1.97% today and Microsoft is right back up to the critical resistance zone at 252 and the bulls need to break above this level to start marching higher towards the gap fill at 262. A rejection from here would be very bearish and would easily send us down towards our target at 242. And if we break down below that support, we could start down towards the gap fill at 226. On Nvidia stock, we were up 2.71% today as Nvidia is bouncing off of the rising moving averages, which was that support zone between 224 and 225, and we're back above the resistance and now support level at 227. From here, we can retest resistance at 238, which is still a critical risk level you can short from because if we break above that, we're likely breaking out and going to short squeeze into the 240s. Any lower high rejection from here could easily send us back down to our support at 220 and then the gap fill at 211. On Tesla stock, we were down 5.85% today as we did gap down to the lower Bollinger Band at 187 and instantly found buyers near that support, but we do have a very large gap to fill to the upside at 198.5. There's no guarantee when this gap has to fill, but there is a very good chance the gap fills in the very near future because even if we're going lower, we're going to need time for these Bollinger Bands to expand, which means we could still continue this bounce towards 198 to fill the gap before we go any lower. A rejection from the resistance between 198 and 199 could send us back down towards critical support at 183. And if we break 183, we'll be looking for the next leg lower at 173. If we continue higher and break through resistance at 200, we're going to retest the other resistance levels at 205 and 208. On Apple stock, we were up 0.41% today as Apple gapped down below the lower Bollinger Band, which means there is very limited downside and we instantly found buyers because of it and we came right back up to the resistance at 146. As you can tell, looking at this chart, the only thing saving Apple from going any lower is the Bollinger Bands. So as those expand, if we do get rejected from resistance, we could still be continue marching lower, which could take us down to the next target lower at 141. Bull breakouts will require a break over 147 and then 150, and above 150, we should easily start marching back up towards 156. On the financials, we were down 0.48% today as the financials continue to look bearish, now breaking down below the 50 EMA and a lot of these moving averages are rolling over. So if we lose the support at 35, we could be going much lower down towards the 200 daily moving average. The industrial sector was up 1.17% today, getting a very strong bounce off of the rising 50 EMA, and we did get a close back over the 20 daily moving average, but we're back to resistance at 102.6. On the healthcare sector, we were up 0.61% today as we're finally seeing this dead cat bouncing because we were way too far extended below the lower Bollinger Band, but we are still in a bear trend and we are still bearish while we're below 130. The energy sector was up 0.88%, bouncing from that support at the rising 200 daily moving average, but now reaching resistance at the negatively sloping 20 daily moving average, which is right around 86.5. A rejection from here could send us back down towards 82.6 and then 80.5. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, there is going to be the possibility this is just a bull trap if we do get rejected from upper resistance, which we are very close to. So it is much safer to wait for price action to confirm that we're going to break out. As you can tell from the charts, a lot of these 
these charts do look like they are trying to roll over and die, so you need to be very cautious and manage your risk at these very critical support zones because if they break down, we could easily see high volume selling. Remember, trading is always about managing a risk and stacking the odds in your favor, which means if you're bearish, you should be shorting at resistance, and if you're bullish, you should only be buying at support. Make sure you have a trade plan prepared for any scenario and then let the price action tell you which one of those scenarios is playing out and then trade accordingly. If you want to join a community of price action traders and get access to all of my intraday updates and analysis, come join us over at the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community. You can find out how to join my Discord server by clicking on the link below. I also have a trade alert service called Bank Trade Alerts that only trades the ETFs TQQ and SQQ and sends you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. You can find out how to join Bank Trade Alerts by clicking on the link below. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.